Hi gang, Scott here. We're going to have a look at the film grain filter in On One Effects. As its name suggests, this filter adds grain to your photo in the style of 35 millimeter film. So we'll look at the controls, the sliders, how the tool works, and a couple of use cases. One you've probably thought of and one maybe you haven't considered before. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you're thinking about adding On One Effects or any of the On One plugins or tools to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that will save you a little bit of money. Now let's have a look at film grain. Let's first get a film grain filter added to the stack, run down the controls. So we have what we always have with our various filters in effects. We have masking, we have opacity, we have a handful of styles. And then specific for the film grain, we have the type of film that you want to emulate. So all of these different types of films that are in the tool, you know, on ones added these and you know taken the actual grain patterns from these types of film and added it to the tool. So you can choose if you were like used to shoot with the you know, Ilford Delta 400 back in the day. You can choose that, and you can control how much grain and the size of the grain. So if we get ourselves zoomed in here and let's uh, let's kind of get a, uh, a before and after bar up here. You know, we can see uh, here's here's the here's the noise. Here's the the grain I should say, and here's the previous photo, you know, without the effect, you know, before and after. And so just hovering over these, we can see the changes, right? 3200, that's a high uh, ASA, ISO uh, film, and you're going to see that grain show up. And if that's too much, when well, you can say, oh, I, I want to I wanna play around with that. I want to change the grain size or lower the amount. Of course, we have the opacity slider, which kind of acts like a mount in this case here. Opacity and mount, they're, they're morally equivalent for this particular filter. And so for this kind of photo, you know, something that uh, adds a bit of uh, a film look to it and just kind of hovering over things. I kind of like how T-Max 400 looks. Change the size a little bit. Let's zoom back out here and take a look at uh, before and after. Turn off that. Before that film grain, after. We'll zoom in and see it here in the center. Before, after just giving it a little bit of that 35 millimeter film quality kind of feel. So that's like the classic use case, right? You have a photo that you want to give it a vintage or a film kind of feel. There's another place that film grain comes in handy. It's with compositing. If you are compositing images that were captured at different ISO values, one's noisier than the other, Film grain can help get a more uh, smooth blend of those two exposures. Let me show you an example of that. So this scene here, it's pre-dawn. The sun hasn't risen, it's low light. Capture a higher ISO photo so that the boats are frozen, right? there. The, the harbor water is moving ever so gently, yet the boats will bob up and down. So I captured a high ISO photo, and you can see there's you know lots of noise in here. There's color noise, luminance noise. So we can deal with some of that, right? We'll, we'll turn on some noise reduction there and it smooths things out. But what I really want for this photo is I really want to have really smooth, crystal clean water. And then the boats, well, I took a second exposure, a long exposure that gave me wonderfully smooth water. But of course the boats are blurry because they're bobbing up and down for the four, five, six seconds that the camera was capturing the longer exposure. Now I can blend these two together easy enough in layers and we'll do that in just a second, but the problem will become I have this clean, low ISO, low noise image where I have nice smooth water, nice, nice sky, with the high ISO boats underneath. When I blend them, it'd be obvious that I have noise problems, even with the amount of noise reduction that has been added. So first thing, let me turn on this top layer, open up the masking area. I'll just use the AI mask really quickly here. You know, so we'll we'll drop away the boats and we'll keep oops, we'll keep the sky and the water. Let me hit apply on that. Let this go to work, create the mask. This isn't a masking video. It's about the film grain filter. And I'm coming back to that in a minute. So let me let the mask do its thing and then we'll, uh, we'll do the blend. Okay, so that masking is done. Let me zoom in here and let's focus on the boats here. We've got 
this area we can see the noise and I've got no noise at all in the water this is not a believable blend it just doesn't look like the same single you know, image it's 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 obviously two images that have been put together so what can we do here well I have the long exposure layer selected I can go into effects and add film grain and as we add some film grain let's say start with moderate all right moderate's too strong subtle not bad start pulling that back you know, maybe around there it's starting to get to the stage where this is now much more believable just by adding in a bit of grain to my low noise low ISO image that has become part of my composite and of course if there's a particular look you're going for you know maybe uh, I'd want to have um, like 3200 I think that photo I did was like 1250 so I maybe want a little more grain in there but we can dial back the strength on it the opacity so it it mimics this scene much more closely and now it's a much more believable blend as people would zoom in and look at things all right, I see some grain pattern here. I see some grain pattern there. And you can play back and forth between adding film grain to your low ISO exposure, noise reduction on your high ISO exposure, and find a middle ground so you can make a good blend. You don't necessarily have to uh, try to solve it all with one tool or on one layer. So that's another way to use film grain in your post-processing. If you're doing composites with photos that have multiple you know, different levels of noise, take a look at grain to add in a little noise where you need it for a more believable blend. I hope you found the video useful, got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.